What's going on everybody? Um, I've decided to do like a vlog just to record my sort of time up at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just like a daily recap. I'm here for seven to eight days, just do like a daily recap just to let people know how it's gone. Obviously there'll be ups and downs, there'll be good times, there'll be bad times, but um, I think it'd be good to recap it, just something to look back on and I think it'd be useful for back at home. I know before I come up there were lots of friends and family asking questions like what's it going to be like and the truth is I've never been up here before so I've never even been as a punter to watch comedy shows um, so yeah a bit of a culture shock for me but I think it'd be good to document it and just sort of give people back home the, the full lowdown of what, uh, what's going on up here I will admit I've stolen this idea from Adam Anwar he's a fellow comedian he's been up here before uh, performing on other people's shows but he's taken his own show up here this time for the first time, I believe. And he's just doing day-to-day -day recaps. And I am I think it's been really good content. I've been watching them every day. Um, and I thought, yeah, why not? Why not just do my own? Um, like I said, there's a lot of people back home who they don't understand it. I understand a little bit more, obviously, speaking to people who've been there and done it. But it's sort of, I think the crowning moment on on the uh, reason why I'm going to do this is because the day before I come up, my mum said, oh, she goes, oh, make sure you ring me when you're up there. And uh, she goes, is it live? Is it going to be live on TV? I said, what do you mean? She goes, obviously at the festival. And then after I probed a bit more, it turned out she thought it was like Glastonbury and I was going to be on the main stage at like 7 p.m. So that's why I'm doing this. So day one, I set off yesterday from Bradford at 10 a.m. The plan was 8 a.m. Um, and people who know me back home will understand that's like a, a fault that I have that I need to work on. But yeah, I set off at 10 o'clock. Uh, it was a four and a half hour journey. I did stop for like a 45 minute break because I was tired. And I drove past a sign that says, if you're tired, take a break. So granddad went for a little break. Uh, because I set off late and because I had to stop by the time I got here, I had to check into a hostel where I'm staying because I'm fucking financially poor. And after checking in, I think I got there about four o'clock and then I had to meet the rest of the team who I'm doing the show with at five o'clock at the venue. So I literally only had time to check in, drop a couple of bits and bats off in the room. Then I had to take my car and drive towards Edinburgh Central near the venue, parked up. Met the guys there, Amanda Hersey. Um, she's one of the comedians from Scotland who's part of the Best in Class Showcase. And Kelly Rickard, who is from Wales. Um, Great to see them. I met them before at one of the fundraisers for Best in Class. They just showed me the ropes, basically. Um, and then what came, what was to come next was a bit that I was dreading, the the flyering to get people in the event. Now, basically, if you've not been up to the up to the fringe before, it was exactly like I thought it was going to be. Like, literally, the whole of Edinburgh has, Edinburgh has got hundreds and hundreds of venues. Um, and, it's, and, and during like the whole time of August, they've got thousands and thousands of comedians who book these venues all throughout the day from literally like 9 a.m. in the morning to four o'clock, no, probably not that late, maybe about two o'clock. That might be the latest show or something, or that might be the time when the latest show finishes. So there's a single, like there's a sh hourly show from morning till the early hours, basically. And you've got to imagine all the tourists that come in all the comedians are stood there with the flyers trying to sell their products, trying to sell their show, trying to get in, uh, get people in and the customers in. So that's what I was dreading because I hate begging people, do you know what I mean? I hate being that person like, oh, we please come to my show. I find it so destroying. Uh, the only good thing was, like obviously I was doing it with two other people. Amanda, who's local, well, she's from Glasgow, but she's from Scotland. She's a powerhouse, she just, she just storms through. Um, just giving out flyers. Um, Kelly, me and Kelly, we were doing sort of either side of the venue. Uh, I found it tough at the start. I was just pretending I was busy. Didn't want to uh, try to break the ice and get people in. But as soon as I, as soon as I started it, like slowly and surely, I sort of started to stick to a routine and sort of pick out who I think the show would appeal to. And I think I got a few people in in the end. But Sean Davis, who put the whole night together, she. Um, the best in class, she sort of, she's the gaffer of best in class. She told, told us before the show, we sold 35 tickets, like pre-sales, which is good. The venue can hold like 110 at an absolute push, I think. 
So like that gave me a bit of confidence because I was like, oh, well, at least there's going to be around 30 people who are going to be there. So then if we can get any more. Um, so then like the show starts at seven. We fly it from like maybe half five till half six. Made his way upstairs, started to set up um, once the show before us had finished. Um, and then I started to get nervous and I never I never get nervous, but I wasn't nervous about the performance. Like the performance was going to be whatever it was going to be. I was confident about that. It, I was more nervous about like what if I'd let the team down flyer in and then it wasn't, the show was not going to be as full as it could have been or maybe should have been. Um, and then we opened the doors and the first few people come in. I, um, I'd actually, what I was proud about is that I, I've, two pe I know a couple that we met in Tenerife, um, they're from Scotland and they came out, which was amazing to spot. Um, so shout out Marvin and Dino. They came out. Um, so we opened the doors and like people started trickling in and I'm like, oh, maybe we might get 40, 50 at a push. And they just kept coming in and kept coming in and kept coming in. And in the end, I, I did literally a head count and I counted 102 people. And for a, a debut experience, it was surreal, truly surreal. Um, Amanda hosted. I was like the opening act and then Kelly closed. We both did sort of around 15 to 20 minutes each. And the set couldn't have gone any better. Like literally, it felt like it got smashed out of the park. And it was like, it was just such a buzz. Come off stage, like sometimes, like if I've done like a really good show and say, like even if there's more people, sometimes I don't really come off with that big of a buzz. Like most people know me, like I'm fairly neutral, fairly stable with my emotions. I'm never too high, never too low. But because that, like, there was, because that was like a big milestone. Obviously, Edinburgh Fringe is the the mecca, the holy grail for comedians. It was, yeah, it was a hell of a thrill afterwards. I was buzzing about it. Everybody was buzzing. The team were buzzing. Um, I think they made a load of money from cash donations at the end, um, card donations, and obviously the pre, the pre book tickets. So it was absolutely fantastic. Um, from there, so the show finished, and I'd managed to book another couple of spots. Um, there was one, at a place, um, a venue called East Side, which was maybe about twenty minutes walk. That was, that show got a mid reaction. I think I did something a little bit darker earlier on, and I didn't go with it. And afterwards, like apparently, the, I was, I was a little the back, the two back rows couldn't hear me, so that was like a mid reaction. Um, so I come out there and I was like, I wasn't deflated or all like that. I was like, oh, you know what I mean? I was still on a bit of a high, whatever. And then the next one was I did a show for Kyle Legacy at Dragonfly. Um, the premise of the night is he gets one Australian, one African, and one English comedian. That's how he tries to work it. Uh, we all do about seven minutes each. He does a load of crowd work. And that one was all right. It was all right. The only thing that was interesting, like a little bit of a change with that is like, I went on last this time. So I was gauging what was getting reactions and what getting reactions from the other comedians. And because like they had people in the crowd who were from Africa, Australia, and obviously Scotland and the rest of the world, I had like a lot of international tourists in. Um, I had to tweak my set, um, check out like any English references or regional references. So like I was doing like sort of um, a bridged version of my set where I cherry picked it and that was all right. I got a half decent reaction. Um, and then with, there were talks about let's go for like, a, let's carry on drinking. Um, but it had been a very long day. So I literally went to my car. What did I do? Dropped something off at my car, left it where it will park for the time being. Um, and then just made my way back to the, the hostel about one o'clock in the morning, walked back, nice half an hour journey. And yeah, that was it. That was the the end of day one. Great day, great experience. Um, so buzzing. So we move on to the next day where I think I've got I've got my own show at seven o'clock, and I think I've got two other gigs booked in. Um, so yeah, we'll do a recap of that. Uh, if you found this useful, great. If you haven't, I don't care, bro. It's safe.